In this video, we will talk about Chassel's theorem. Chassel's theorem is a theorem that talks about how to analyze the general motion of a body. And it says that you can have a very complicated body. For instance, like a boomerang or a set of keys flying through the air that's following both kind of a path and it's wobbling like this. And it says that no matter how complicated that motion is, whether it's a spaceship tumbling or whatever, you can break it down into two simpler parts. Pure translation of the center mass. That's what we studied all the way up to the chapter on rotation. So treat it like it's a particle with all the mass at the center mass. And then treat it like it's a spinning wheel with an axis through the center of mass. It won't work anywhere else except the center of mass, but if you do these two and you add them together, you get the complicated general motion of any object. So take anything you have, say a curveball or some other object, maybe a barbell like that, and it's going around in some and it says, no, 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 don't try to solve that problem. Solve the problem of the barbell going in whatever motion the center of mass would be. Maybe it's a straight line. Maybe it's a parabola because it's been thrown through the air. And then, once you do that, add to it the motion. If you put your axis in the center of mass, where it just rotates around. Add those two together and you have the most complicated motion that you can find. Now to let's see this do that, let's do the following. Let's go ahead and let's analyze a small ball. Let me, while I'm at it, put a box around Mr. Chassel. We have a spinning ball and it's rolling with that slipping. And we've already considered how to analyze that in the section on rolling with that slipping. And we said that we know that this ball has an angular rotation like that about an instantaneous point of contact. And if we consider it in just rotation, this point here, called VP, for its velocity, is zero because it doesn't move. It's not slipping. And this point here at the center of mass, VCM, we said is omega times this distance, which is R. And we said that this point up here, which is now a distance of 2R from the axis of rotation, is going twice as fast. I'll call that point A. If you don't understand this, go back and watch the video on rolling without slipping. What Chassel's theorem said is this is one way to analyze this motion. But any motion, including this, can be thought of as pure translation of the center mass. What does that mean? Everything on the ball is moving with the velocity of the center of mass. So that would be omega r. So pure translation of the center mass and then pure rotation about the center of mass. So in that case, we're assuming it rotates, but not about point P here, but about the axle in the center of mass. That means this point up here, so if this is omega, this point up here has a velocity in that direction. This one has a velocity in this direction. This one's distance is r. So the tangential velocity is omega times the distance to the axis. So it's omega r. And this one here 
it's a distance r so its tangential velocity is omega r in that direction now what Chassel's theorem says is that you can add these two together so if this one has an arrow of omega r to the right and this one has an omega r arrow to the left the sum of those two arrows is zero this one has is at the center it has no arrow this has an arrow of omega r when you add omega r to zero you get an arrow that's omega r up here at point a this arrow is omega r to the right this arrow is omega r to the right the sum of those two arrows is two times omega r to the right we get exactly what we got back over here when we were using instantaneous point and making it rotate about that but this advantage is that this is true for things besides rolling without slipping it's true for any general motion you may always consider it pure translation of the center mass pure rotation of the center mass add those together and you get the most general motion that an object can exhibit so you want to understand a, a curveball understand the ball as a projectile that doesn't spin and then understand the ball due to its spin put those two together and you have the curveball now usually what's done with this rather than adding vector arrows is that any other property can be found this way including energy and that's what we're going to use it for we're going to find the total energy of a spinning ball has two parts it has energy because these particles are moving like this it has energy because the particles are spinning around you have to add the energy of this type plus the energy of that type to get the total energy this is usually more convenient than calculating the energy of pure rotation with a moment of inertia calculated at point P why is this because the moment of inertia for the center mass axis are in our table inside our textbooks and the moment of inertia of point P is not in the textbook so you would require the parallel axis theorem or some other method to be able to compute I for that. So instead, we're going to do our energy analysis of rolling objects using this idea. Two bank accounts. Bank account of translation, bank account of rotation. Add the two bank accounts to get the total energy of motion. So if you write that down, this is Chassel's theorem in terms of energy. Total energy of motion the energy due to rotation about the center mass the energy of the translation of center mass so K total is equal to one-half rotation energy that's the moment of inertia about which axis the center mass so you got to use the I for the center mass times the angular speed squared plus one-half times the mass times the speed of the center of mass squared this is how to find the total energy of an object in general motion back at the beginning of this course when we did not when we had particles only we didn't have any rotation in other words I was zero and we had one half mv squared and that's what we did in chapter six in chapter 8 if you had just a spinning wheel but it's not translating you don't have any of this you just have energy of rotation one half I omega squared a general object can do both it can translate and it can rotate so it can have energy of the center mass of translation and it can have energy of rotation about the center mass you must add both bank accounts to get the total energy when you do energy analysis otherwise you do it exactly the way you did it in the energy chapter so except for counting things up correctly everything else about doing energy problems is the same in the energy chapter just make sure you count up all the kinetic energy 
And the other important thing to know is you can't just break this about any axis. This only works for the center mass. So that I has to be for the center mass. That velocity has to be for the center mass. Nothing else works this way. Now, what we need to do is to go and look at some general problems. Let me tell you that in general, in general, omega and the speed of the center mass are totally independent. You can have a wheel spin but not move. You can have a car move or a ball move or a block slide and not have it spin. This and this are generally independent. There is an exception and it's rolling without slipping because they're rolling not slipping we have the no slip condition that connects this and this and will enable us to do energy analysis for problems like the day at the races. I'll see you on another video.